Welcome to this edition of News Today, a series where we briefly discuss and analyze important news of the day. Without delay, let's explore the headlines first. Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change has notified Wildlife Protection Licensing Additional Matters for Consideration Rules 2024. Government is reconsidering Free Movement Regime or FMR Agreement with Myanmar. Draft roadmaps for critical tech sectors has been released by Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology. Two mosquito fish species has invaded various ecosystems across India. Scientists have mapped the largest deep sea coral reef off the US Atlantic coast. Labor rules have been introduced for workers abroad. Starting with the first news. Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change has notified Wildlife Protection Licensing Additional Matters for Consideration Rules 2024. These rules aim to replace Wildlife Protection Licensing Additional Matters for Consideration Rules 1983. The 1983 rules prohibited issuing licenses to trade in a wild animal categorized under Schedule 1 or Part 2 of Schedule 2 under Wildlife Protection Act 1972. Licenses were granted in exceptional cases with previous approval of the central government. This condition has been changed in 2024 rules. As per the new 2024 rules, no such license shall be granted if it relates to any wild animal specified in Schedule 1 to the Act except with previous consultation of the central government. Chief Wildlife Warden or an authorized officer issues the license based on parameters like existing licenses and implications of license on hunting or trade of wild animals concerned. Now let's understand what would be the impacts of these new rules. These rules might adversely affect mammals and birds enlisted in Schedule 2 as some of them are already endangered. For example, bulbuls, falcons, turtles, geckos, snakes and bats. Earlier Wildlife Protection Amendment Act 2022 has reduced the number of schedules from 6 as of 1972 Act to 4. Let's understand these four schedules. Schedule 1 includes animal species with the highest level of protection. Some examples of species under Schedule 1 are black buck, sloth bear, cheetah, and swamp deer. Schedule 2 consists of animals with lesser levels of protection, for example, nilgai, Indian flying fox, and Andaman bulbul. Schedule 3 have protected plant species like Neil kurinji, pitcher plant, and tree turmeric. And at last, Schedule 4 lists specimens in appendices under Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora or sites, for example, River Dolphin and Spider Monkeys. In our next news, government is reconsidering Free Movement Regime or FMR agreement with Myanmar. The Union Home Minister said that the Indo-Myanmar border will soon be fenced and will consider ending its Free Movement Regime agreement. Currently, the border with Myanmar is predominantly unfenced except for a small section in Manipur covering approximately 10 km. Let's first understand about the Free Movement Regime or FMR agreement with Myanmar. The agreement permits individuals residing within a 16 km radius of the border to transfer freely without requirement of visa or passport. It was formalized in 2018 as part of India's Act East policy. Now let's discuss about the reasons to reconsider free movement regime. Some reasons include illegal and uncontrolled immigration of Chin people from Myanmar, exodus of Unta soldiers seeking sanctuary in Mizoram, rise of ethnic violence and insurgency as the Methi community attributed the last year's tension to the perceived illegal migration of tribal Kuki Chin communities. Surge in drug production in Myanmar that is being linked to Myanmar's political turmoil has security implications for the region. Let's also discuss other aspects of India-Myanmar relations. Boost to regional connectivity through Kaladan Multimodal Project and India-Myanmar Thailand Trilateral Highway, contributing to multilateral cooperation through BIMSTEC and Mekong Ganga Cooperation, and India-Myanmar Bilateral Army Exercise fostering defense cooperation. Moving on to the next news. Draft roadmaps for critical tech sectors has been released by Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology. The roadmaps were prepared by the Center for Development of Advanced Computing or CDAC for conducting indigenous research and development in five critical tech sectors. CDAC is the premier research and development organization of the Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology for carrying out research and development in IT, electronics and associated areas. Now let's have a look at the key highlights of the roadmaps sector-wise. In quantum technologies, a crucial focus is set on standardization with plans to achieve it by 2033 followed by the groundbreaking integration of quantum computation and communication by 2034. 
Targets for cryptography include use of cryptography for development of solutions for small resource constrained devices by 2028 and the establishment of dedicated centers of excellence for cryptography by 2034. Mobile security threats from applications by 2030, complemented by the creation of an indigenous ecosystem for secure OS and mobile hardware. The Internet of Things Security Roadmap envisions the implementation of digital certificates by IoT Security 2030 and progressing towards enhancing the security of Internet of Things applications by 2047. In cyber forensics, targets include specialized financial tech forensic capabilities to be developed by 2030 and privacy protection and quantum forensics by 2047. If we talk about some other initiatives for these critical tech sectors, then these include US-India Initiative on Critical and Emerging Technology, India AI, National AI Portal of India, National Strategy for Artificial Intelligence by Niti Aayog, and National Quantum Mission. Moving on to the next news. Two mosquito fish species has invaded various ecosystems across India. These two species of mosquito fish are Gambusia effinis and Gambusia holbrooki. Both are detrimental invasive alien species. Mosquito fish was introduced into local water bodies to address mosquito menace by states like Andhra Pradesh, Odisha and Punjab. Their feeding habits and aggressive behavior in habitats have led to extinction of endemic species. Before proceeding ahead, let's also discuss about Gambusia. Gambusia are native to US. It has been introduced as a form of biological mosquito control. It feeds on mosquito larvae. It lives in shallow waters and penetrates dense vegetation growth where larvae and pupa hide. In 1928, Gambusia was first introduced in India during British rule. Now let's discuss and understand about invasive alien species. These species are animals, plants or other organisms that are introduced from outside their natural range, negatively impacting native biodiversity, ecosystem services or human well-being, for example, water hyacinth and lantana. Globalization through increasing trade, transport, travel and tourism increases introductions of invasive species to new areas. Now let's also discuss some impacts of invasive alien species. Global economic cost of invasive alien species exceeded $423 billion annually in 2019. Invasive species are a major cause of crop loss and degraded soil quality. Also, 1 in 10 species on the IUCN Red List are threatened by invasive alien species. They can also serve as vectors for infectious diseases, example malaria and West Nile fever. If we talk about efforts taken to control invasive species, then these include Target 6 of Kunming Montreal Biodiversity Framework eliminates invasive alien species impacts on biodiversity by 2030, Global Invasive Species Program 1997 and the Ramsar Convention. Moving ahead, scientists have mapped the largest deep sea coral reef off the US Atlantic coast. Underwater mapping technology enables the construction of 3D images of the ocean floor, facilitating the mapping of coral reefs at depths 200 meters to 1000 meters where sunlight doesn't penetrate. More of the ocean floor is covered by deep sea reefs than by tropical reefs, which are found at 0 to 30 meters depth with light penetration. The Great Barrier Reef in Australia is the biggest tropical coral reef system in the world. If we talk about deep sea corals, then they are colonies of small animals that build a common skeleton which grows into many shapes and colors. They provide habitat for sharks, swordfish, shrimp and fishes. Corals are invertebrate animals belonging to a large group of colorful animals called Nidaria. Coral reefs are made up of colonies of hundreds to thousands of tiny individual corals called polyps. These marine animals have hard exoskeletons made of calcium carbonate. In India, coral reefs are found in the Gulf of Kutch, Gulf of Mannar, Andaman and Nicobar, Lakshadweep Islands, and Malwan in Maharashtra. Corals play an important role by protecting coastlines from storms and erosion. They provide jobs for local communities and offer opportunities for recreation. Corals are also exposed to some threats like disturbance from oil and gas drilling, ocean acidification, unsustainable fishing, and coral harvesting. For better understanding, let's now understand difference between deep sea corals and shallow water corals. Deep sea corals are less diverse, whereas shallow water corals are more diverse. For food, deep sea corals either feeds on organic material falling from the surface or on small plankton. On the other hand, shallow water corals rely on photosynthetic algae, also known as zooxanthellae, that live within corals and provide their hosts with nutrition. Deep sea corals are white in color, whereas shallow water corals have brown and green colors due to algae. Deep sea corals have grooves in the form of tree, feather, column or fan shapes. Shallow water corals form rock-like reef structures. 
Moving ahead, labor rules have been introduced for workers abroad. Trade unions have opposed UP and Haryana government's recruitment of workers to work in Israel primarily for construction activities. They have cited that it is against Indian ethos of bringing back citizens from conflict zones. Let's start by first knowing the International Labor Organization Conventions for Protection of Migrant Workers. First is the Migration for Employment Convention revised 1949 for maintaining an adequate and free service to assist migrants for employment. Another is Migrant Workers Supplementary Provisions Convention 1975 for illegally employed migrant workers. It is to be noted that India has not ratified both conventions. Now let's discuss some issues faced by the migrant laborers. Risk of conflict and violence due to the volatile political landscape makes them vulnerable to regional conflicts. One example is ongoing Israel-Hamas conflict. They may fall prey to exploitation and unfair labor practices like wage theft and poor working conditions due to limited legal knowledge and language skills. There is also a denial of social security due to lack of portability. Lack of proper accommodation and poor standard of living are some other issues faced by migrant laborers. Now let's have a look at some measures taken by India for protection of migrant laborers. India signed labor manpower agreements with six West Asian countries including Kuwait and Oman. India has introduced welfare programs like the National Pension Scheme for NRIs and Indian Community Welfare Fund. India has signed the Global Compact for Safe, Orderly and Regular Migration 2018. Some other measures include e-migrate application system and Madad portal for Gravan's readdressal. The personality news for today is Ras Bihari Bose. He was remembered on his death anniversary. Now let's have a look at his contributions. He was an active member of the Yugantar group of revolutionaries under the leadership of Motilal Roy. He acted as an effective link between revolutionaries of Punjab, United Provinces and Bengal. He was also involved in Delhi conspiracy case of bomb attack on Viceroy Lord Hardinge in 1912. He founded the Indian Independence League in 1942 in Tokyo and played a key role in Ghadar movement and in formation of Azad Hind Fauj or Indian National Army. He exhibited the values of patriotism, leadership, courage and perseverance. As we conclude today's main news, let's go through some quick updates. The Supreme Court ruled that children born out of void or voidable marriage can't be denied share in parents' property. Court concluded that Hindu Succession Act 1956 recognized the institution of a joint Hindu family governed by the Mitakshara law. Mitakshara law is one of the two major Hindu law schools that govern succession of property in Hindu undivided family. It holds that the son and grandson have the right to family property through birth. Two Arogya Maitri disaster management cubes developed by Project Bhishma have been deployed in Ayodhya. It is tailored to treat up to 200 casualties. It is equipped with innovative tools designed to enhance disaster response and medical support during emergencies. It integrates artificial intelligence and data analytics to facilitate effective coordination, real-time monitoring, and efficient management of medical services in the field. Binturong and small clawed otters are two new mammalian species added to the list of fauna in Assam's Kaziranga National Park. Both are listed under Schedule One of Wildlife Protection Act 1972. Apex Court opined that Rajasthan can stop mining activities in Aravalli Range if they are found to be detrimental to the environment. Aravalli Hills are one of the oldest folded mountains of the world. It is located in northwest India, that is, states Gujarat. Rajasthan, Haryana and Union Territory of Delhi stretching from southwest and northeast direction. Its highest peak is Guru Shikhar near Mount Abu, Rajasthan. It is also a source of rich minerals like zinc, gold, silver, copper, dolomite and marble. NASA has regained its contact with Ingenuity. Ingenuity is the first aircraft to make a powered controlled flight on another planet. Solar powered, able to charge on its own. It has wireless communication system. It is carried along with the Perseverance rover that was launched under Mars 2020 mission. Flight environment is thin atmosphere, less than 1% as dense as Earth's. Central government laid the foundation stone of Ayush Diksha at Central Ayurveda Research Institute, Bhuvneshwar. CARI is a unit under the Central Council for Research in Ayurvedic Sciences. It is the first of its kind center for the development of human resources for Ayush professionals. Madhika language currently has only two speakers and is on the brink of extinction. Madhika is spoken by Chakalya community and has no script. It is largely influenced by Haviyaka Kannada, which is an old form of Kannada. It is a blend of Telugu, Tulu, Kannada and Malayalam. Initiatives to protect endangered languages include Scheme for Protection and Preservation of Endangered Languages and Establishment of Center for Endangered Languages in Central Universities and Establishment of Centers for Endangered Languages in Central Universities. 
Recently, the Prime Minister offered prayers at the Sri Ranganatha Swami Temple. Sri Ranganatha Swami Temple, also known as Tiruvaranga Tirupati, is dedicated to Ranganatha, reclining form of Lord Vishnu. It is constructed in Dravidian style and the temple complex has 21 sculpted gopurams, 50 sub-shrines and 9 sacred pools. It is not just a temple but a temple town, unique in its Sapta Parakram formation and one of 108 Divya Desams dedicated to Lord Vishnu. It is situated on island of Sri Rangam, bounded by Kaveri and Kolidam rivers. Before we go, it's time to put your knowledge to test in today's segment of Test Your Learning. Thank you for joining us. We hope you have enjoyed this edition of News Today. To get the answers to today's quiz and to download the PDF of News Today, make sure to check out the links in the description below.